Welcome back to Workshop Friend. This is part six of making a radius turning tool. Last video, I used the tool in its basic format and it seemed to work quite well, but I soon realized that um, I had difficulty getting access to tight corners. So this is the kind of issue I'm referring to. Not a problem if you don't have a shoulder, if you just have a plain section, you can go round as probably as far as you need to go. But when you have a collar like this, um, access becomes a problem. So what I proposed in the last video was reorientating the cutting tool to be mounted vertically so it becomes a tangential cutting tool and uh, that way you can get right into the corner. So since I have lots of space on the turntable, I'm hoping to have an, an additional tool holder so this one can be removed and I can place a tool holder somewhere in this area here and that will look um, like this so um, the tool will be mounted vertically uh, I toyed with both um, square section and round and after some trial and error I finally um, came to the conclusion that round was better um, as shown here. So we'll have a clamp, a clamp tool holder. It will be set across at uh, 7 degrees from the vertical in that direction and in the other direction 7 degrees to give the required clearance angles and to enable me to grind a tool or get into tight spaces. Uh, it will be mounted off the table and it will um, require another groove to be cut into the top of the table so um, so groove across here I'm going to put it on the center line originally it was to one side and the reason for that is so that I can turn the tool around and have it in one direction for uh, ball turning or external curves and one for internal radii and uh, so this will be this will slide it will have some kind of clamping feature to clamp it to the table and the height of the tool can be um, fixed uh, with this clamping arrangement here. Now I had to think carefully about how I was going to make this and um, I don't have a compound table, I don't have a quill in my mill. I did think about making a 7 degree uh, riser block or a compound angle riser block to mount everything on but that seemed rather complicated and then in the end what I decided to do was to make this in three parts so the base will be um, a flat piece uh, with a holder with the seven degree compound angle in it and into that will slot the tool holder and I'm going to try welding that up. That's a, a new skill for me, so we'll see how that goes. Um, on balance, I think uh, fabrication is probably going to be easier, but we'll see. So I realize this is a little bit difficult to picture, but I think it will become clear as we go along. I'm going to start uh, with this holder with the two seven degree angles in it, and I'm going to make it from this piece of, I think it's half inch by. 5 eighths stock.
Well, uh, here's the little component uh, I've been working on. It strikes me just how small it is. And I, looking at this, I just wonder how I'm going to get on welding it to the base plate, especially since I don't have a TIG welding facility. Um, this is very small, very delicate. Here's the base plate, which I need to work on next. Um, anyway, I'm fairly committed to this approach, fabricating it. We'll see how it goes. I'm treating this as a learning exercise. And if this doesn't work, then I'll have to try and find a way to make the whole thing from solid. Well, it's time to weld these two parts together. The reason I put this step here is so that it makes uh, location easier. I just have to bring this up to the edge and then I'll clamp it with uh, a G-cramp just to make sure everything sits squarely. It doesn't have to go up to the end. I can machine that uh, square afterwards. This has got excess length on it. The other thing I've done is made this a quarter of an inch longer. So you'll see uh, later that the proportions are slightly different from how I originally designed it. Now, uh, I am hesitating a bit on this. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, I don't have much experience with welding. I've only recently acquired a welder, a small MIG welder. I've done some practice runs on various uh, items. Uh, not very good, to be honest with you. Uh, but the time has come. I've just got to bite the bullet now and uh, attach these two parts together. I'm hoping there's not going to be too much distortion. It doesn't have to be welded all the way around. It's not really a highly stressed component. It just needs to be attached. Now this welder was actually um, given to me by the company. It's a Best Arc 145. I'm not going to review it. I, I, that wasn't the agreement. I'm just going to use it on my channel. And uh, I was looking for something like this anyway, so this is actually very convenient. So you probably see me using this a bit more in the future. As I've already mentioned, I really am a beginner. So after my not so expert welding, uh, this is uh, now joined. There doesn't seem to be much uh, distortion, so that's good. Uh, I've just tidied it up a bit. Uh, I've also put this um, angle in here, so uh, that was easier done once it was mounted on the base. This end is going to come off, and in fact this is going to be profiled to provide clearance uh, from the work when in use. What we need to work on now is the tool holder, uh, which clamps the tool, and it sits in this position here. So this is the drawing, and I've got a piece of material left over from the previous job. So we'll start by producing the outside, the width, and the thickness, um, and then um, drilling and reaming the hole for the tool, uh, slitting, and then um, putting the uh, tapped holes in for the M4 threads. So I'm just getting the position of the uh, reamed hole, the 3 16th reamed hole. So uh, we'll zero that out. Okay, we've got to come across uh, 6.42 millimeters.
five, six, seven, eight, point oh five. Well, I'm afraid we really have run out of time. Um, I hope uh, that this project will be finished next video and uh, we can test it uh, both to turn uh, balls, external radii and also internal radii. So I do hope you'll join me for that.